Okay, welcome back. And here we're going to talk about our new and improved Lambdas using the AWS Systems Manager to store our connection ID for use with any Lambda we want to use after this point. So this is a big improvement here. So I'll talk about this Lambda first, and this connection Lambda is the one that's changed the most. I think there's only two extra lines on the Send IoT Payload Python Lambda. Okay, so here's what's different than the last version. First of all, we have to instantiate a client object of class SSM. That's the system manager, so you're used to doing that. This is how you do it in Node. I'm calling mine my SSM client. And then there's a few lines of new code here. So our new code is we're going to set our parameters, and these are necessary parameters to set to extract that object from the AWS System Manager. The first thing we need is the name of the parameter. Obviously, you can't extract that parameter from SSM without the name. And you remember the name? So I pasted it here. So go ahead and whatever you named yours, you need to paste the name of that parameter in the AWS Systems Manager right there. Now, the other two things that are needed are the value and the value we're going to use unsurprisingly is the connection id so again we're digging into that blob that's returned from our event we when we connect to our web host event request context connection id that's where our connection id is held when the web host serves back that big blob of information so we're going to stick the specific connection id which is that string right in here to connection id value now these two are required parameters when setting that parameter into AWS Systems Manager. The one that's not required is overwrite. That could be set to true or false. However, the default is false. We want true. We want to overwrite the last string value whenever we connect and get a new string value. That's why I had to use this parameter because I had to set it to the true, which wasn't the default. Okay. This is just kind of the standard mechanism using this asynchronous function error data. You've seen this before if you work with Node or JavaScript at all. So anyways, it's kind of self-explanatory. It's going to put the parameters, given these parameters that we already filled out, and it's going to overwrite our current parameter, which again is that XXXX nonsense string. It's going to overwrite that when we connect, and this is how it's going to do it right here. You don't really need this. I gave you a little shorter code you can use in this if else statement, but this is just for additional debugging if you want it. Okay, that's the only change. So then the next thing we have to do, which you've probably already guessed, is we have to change our permissions. So what do we have to add? Well, we certainly have to add that system manager permission so it can access the system manager parameter store. And I'm not sure with this specific WebSocket endpoint if we need to give it execute API, but I think we do. So let's go ahead and just do both. And I'll fast forward through this because you already know how to do this. Okay, let's add that system manager permission. And I shall say one thing, if you type in SSM, that is not the correct one for whatever reason but it's systems manager now. So it's gonna be the same thing, all actions and all resources. Again, if you're using a corporate account where you have multiple clients, make sure to correct that. But for me, it doesn't matter. So all resources, review policy, and all systems manager access. Keep it easy. Okay, that's all the permissions we need. I can close this out now. So our function here is good to go we put our name of our parameter here in our parameter store that's saved over here. Okay, so let's go to our second function, which is that Python send IoT messaging function. And this one's super easy because we literally have, I think, two or three lines of code. The first thing we need to do is instantiate the object in Boto3. So it's just a little bit different format than instantiating it in the Node.js AWS SDK. And that's pretty self-explanatory. And again, the class here is called SSM within the Boto3 client. So the two lines of code we have to add are just right here. So the only field it needs, it needs to know which parameter we're fetching because we may have multiple parameters with different names. So ours is called connection identification. We already know that. Let me make sure I spelled it right because I left this in here before. So I'll just make sure by pasting in here what I already had. Okay. And this is going to be, instead of put parameter, it's going to be get parameter. And we're going to store it in a string called response SSM. 
This is a whole blob of data we get back as a response to our parameters. It's not just the parameter, it's a whole blob of information. So we're gonna dig within that blob to grab the parameter and the value. And when we get that, we're gonna just get our connection ID. So just trust me and you can print it out to see for yourself. I'm not gonna do it here. That when we dig into it, we get the connection ID out of it. And it's stored there in the parameter store and we're gonna test that in a second. Now that we keep that connection ID resident in the function between invocations, so it does not matter if this Lambda dies, when it restarts or comes back from a cold start, it's going to have that parameter that we wrote from our connection Lambda available in the parameter store. So that's good news. And we're simply going to store it right here in connection ID. And again, this requires key value arguments that have this equal sign. That's part of the specification. And then I have IoT message again is the JSON dumps event to turn it into JSON. Again, this is almost the exact same function we had previously, but I added in the ability to retrieve that string connection ID parameter from the AWS Systems Manager store. Okay, so the next thing we have to do, which you've probably already figured out, is our configuration permissions, because we got to give this some extra permissions here. And again, I'll fast forward through this because you know which ones we're going to add. I'll tell you now, they're the API execute permission and access to the Systems Manager store. And we don't have to give it IoT Core permissions because when we make that action rule in IoT Core, it's going to automatically do that for us. So let's go really quick and do it again. I'll fast forward this. Okay. So the next thing we have to do is go into IoT Core and link it up with this function. So when we get JSON payloads from our device, they just get forwarded through this function. And then with that JSON payload, with that temperature, humidity, and timestamps, we can graph it on our static web host. So I told you I would go ahead and recreate everything, but this lecture is getting long. So I'm just going to reuse the previous function, and that's because it's exactly the same. The only difference is I got to route it to this Lambda instead of send IoT payload one. 